Hello, everybody. This is Jackie. Welcome to the Press Pay Lifestyle Inspired Podcast, where we do interviews with people like Shahara on topics. Hi, our topics are listeners find um, th- listeners, which is you, find the resources, tools, and support so that they can be their best inspired self. So, Shahara, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm so glad you got to come too. I know you had a rush around and you were like worried that you didn't have a mic, but you still sound and look lovely. So I think we'll have a great time together. So could you just tell us just a little bit about you and, you know, about your business and what you're, what you're up to these days? Sure. So my name is Shahar Wright. I am a mom of two boys and I am a business law attorney. I work primarily in the greater Houston, Texas area. That's where I'm licensed in Texas. I was born and raised in Houston, Texas, left to go to Virginia for undergrad and then went to Lubbock, Texas, which is completely, for those of you from not Texas, Texas is huge and like different sides are like completely different from each other. So um, I went to Lubbock uh, for law school and came back home. So just, you know, Texas girl, that's who I am. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? Got big ears. Very much so. The one thing that I, I, so when I travel there that I just can't deal. Um, so I've been to, like, I know it is so different. Houston's so much different than Dallas and Plano. And, but when I was in Plano, um, trying to get around, the roads all have like a bunch of names. So like yes. the map will say one thing, like a real map. That's how old I am. I had a map then. And then like the GPS will say something and the road sign will say something else. And I am already directionally impaired. So it was not pleasant. I was like lost forever and ever. (laughs) Yeah. And then we, as locals, we'll call it something completely different because we have a freeway here. Well, they change names. So, you know, the freeways and things like that, that, you know, they'll change names, but we continue to call it whatever it was called from the beginning. So it can be very confusing. <laughs> yeah, I went to, and then I stopped at this gas station. I asked this the, a multilingual man if he could help point me to the airport. And he, and he looked at me like I had lost my mind and literally pointed out the window and there's a giant airport sign, like a giant <laughs> plane. And I'm right. like, okay, I just can't anymore. So, so good for you for being able to navigate that big state. But I did see my first armadillo there though. Those things are cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have those in Wisconsin. Like, no. I'm okay, yeah, we have them. Sadly, you know, with the construction and all that kind of stuff, you don't get to see them as much, but they are cool when you get to see them. My dad used to live in Harlingen, which is like oh, okay. barely in the state. Like, you almost right. roll over and fall into Mexico. So, there's a lot of driving when I would, I had a bunch of clients that go like Austin, Dallas, Houston, like from the bottom all the way up. And from Harlingen up to the first city with humans in it, you get to see lots of little critters going across the street. <laughs> it's like kind of crazy. Um, so you have a practice then. So you're in greater Houston, Texas, and you're a boy mom, which I'm a mom of all the things. I got two boys and two girls. So okay, we'll be- that's cool. It is cool. <laughs> They're so amazing. I love them so much. They make me a happy person. Um, so what kind of services do you provide? Like, I mean, I know you provide legal services, but that means a lot. I've made that mistake before you know, contract law, criminal, civil, like that's a lot of things. So what do you, what do you provide as services? So my practice is primarily working with small and mid-sized businesses and nonprofits. Um, I like to consider myself, um, you know, well, I call myself a business law attorney, which is what I am, but you know, I, I do general business law practice. And so then it covers a whole lot of different things because when you work with small businesses, um, you can't, it's, it's harder to just say, well, I just do this because then they end up having to go to, you know, 25 different lawyers. Um, so my niche really is working with small mid-sized businesses. Usually they're in the one to five mil um, category in terms of what their, you know, what their um, revenue is. And that revolves, makes a lot of different things that we end up having to do. And that's true for a nonprofit. So, you know, I do trademarks, I do contracts, I do business entities, I do some real estate. Um, You know, it kind of goes along with all of that, but it's all with regard to representing small businesses. So, you know, when people ask me what I do and I say I work with small business and they were like, well, do you do this? 
and my answer is, you know, does it have to do with a small business? Because sometimes, you know, I do real estate, but I don't do personal real estate or, you know, individual real estate. So those kinds of things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what I do. So, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, I wish I, A, lived in Houston three years ago and B, knew what you did because I, I was definitely that person. We had like six lawyers and the first person we worked with and not in any insult to any of them. I'm not in any way saying, but I didn't know what I needed. And th many of them didn't know what I needed because they didn't specialize in like small business. So one of the first people we worked with was like, let go from her. Like she was like corporate counsel for a really long time, mm -hmm. which is a lot different than like yes. entrepreneur, helping an entrepreneurial startup do like LLC and EINs and all of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was a very expensive mistake. <laughs> and so a couple other things similar are, then we work with software. So it's a lot of IP and trademarking and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. so do you have advice then for a small business on how to really know if they're selecting a lawyer that's going to be able to help serve them in the way that they need to be served in a small business? I think with any service provider, you know, you have to ask questions. And sometimes, you know, I, I have my clients that say, we don't know what we don't know. And I'm like, yes, that's true. But <laughs> you know what you know, right? You know your business best. You know um, what kinds of things that you're experiencing. You know um, what, what issues you have. You know, I, my clients vary in the types of businesses they have. I kind of have a really eclectic type of practice, not, not all like business lawyers have what I have where my clients kind of come from all kinds of different backgrounds in terms of what they do. So I always say, you know, you know, your business best. I, I don't, I have to learn about your business. You don't really have to learn about mine. So it's for me to understand what you do um, and understand how your business works. And I think having somebody that's willing to do that, to willing to listen, to understand how your business operates is the most important thing. I find that for if I'm having to tell you how to do business, then it's not going to be a good fit because I, you know, if you're doing crafts, I'm not, you know, crafty. I can't. <laughs> I'm I can't, a boy mom. We kick balls. Yes, I'm a boy mom. You know what I'm saying? I can't, you know, I can't tell you how to do crafts. But I can understand, okay, this is how you do your crafts. This is how you sell your business. This is how you market. And then say, okay, because you do it this way, these are the way, things that I think you need to have. So that's the, my approach to it. And I think that, you know, if you're looking for an attorney that's going to fit your business needs, then you need someone who is going to understand your business, understand your business model, and how you move forward. My perspective has always been, um, to not just focus on the legal issues, right? Sometimes people say, well, I haven't had any problems. Well, that's good. I'm glad you haven't, you know, encountered anything. But it's more to, than that. Like I, what I do, a lot of what work that I do is more than just, you know, you know, drafting contracts and doing business entities. It's really talking about how to navigate issues that could potentially lead to a lawsuit and not end up there. You know, when we're talking about a new service that my clients want to put out, and again, I'm representing some of my clients are digital, so they're, you know, working worldwide, having to understand all the impacts of the different privacy laws and things like that, that come into play to ensure that you don't end up getting sued. So, you know, a lot of the conversation that we have is preemptive and thinking about what you plan on doing, how do we need to implement it so that we can minimize liability. So you know, to answer your question, really, I think it's to talk to the lawyer and really see, do they understand what you do? And do they understand the process? And do they have ideas or thoughts about how to ensure that for the long haul of your business, you can grow in the right, you know, direction? Awesome. Wow, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, and it was interesting, you brought up the privacy. So um, we were, I created a software for, um, that was in the med device space. So, and, or, and that's what I did for about 20 years was product management and medical device and integration. And the privacy law thing is crazy. Like, it's just crazy. Like Spain is just, no, just don't even like, it's I'm like, Oh, but if you don't, you're right. If they don't know, they don't know. But if you come in and tell them like, Hey, I transport, you know, part of my business is 
medical data transfers over state lines or over country lines, then you're like, okay, wait, yeah, that's going to be a thing you don't know you need to know right. about the data privacy. So let's, let's look at that. Or if it's in um, healthcare, which a lot of ours was, then you have HIPAA or, you know, some of those other things to consider and other types of insurances you might want to get. Um, so, so that makes sense. I can see how that would work. Um, you also have, uh, I don't know if they're intertwined, but you also run a company called the CEO Effect. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so the CF, CEO Effect is really kind of an offshoot of my law practice. Um, after practicing for 15 years, I you know, saw a lot of issues in terms of dealing with my small businesses and coming through, you know, the financial crisis and seeing my clients, you know, lose their businesses and lose a lot. I saw that a lot of issues that my clients were having were the, the result was legal, you know, being lawsuits and things like that. But the cause was poor management. Um, let's just put that out there. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's not because they were bad business people, but they really couldn't manage the back office aspect of, you know, doing it. So, you know, a lot of CEOs, owners, they're creatives, they are visionaries as well. They should be right. They know how to market they, their product. They know how to sell. They know how to get things out there, but the other stuff, because they're still focused on the selling and things like that gets left behind. So I, and I'm kind of the opposite in that sense, um, where I'm really more in the operations, more concerned about how things, you know, are going, making sure that you're, you dot your I's and cross your T's. So I really wanted to get that message out to more small business owners, because I don't think that there are a lot of people that really talk about that portion of it, you know, all the sales and marketing is all sexy and everybody wants more profits. Like um, unsexy, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, you, you want all of that. However, in order to keep it, you've got to have your operations together. Um, and that makes, that makes all the difference. Um, and that's why businesses close and lawsuits get happen because they don't have that stuff together. So I really wanted to talk about that more. And so the CEO effect was really to allow me to do that outside of my law practice. So I began speaking about that, doing trainings with business owners, nonprofits, the same. Um, I wrote a book called From Entrepreneur to CEO. Oh, cool. And just started to put together training specifically for small businesses, talking about operations, business management, some legal stuff too, but it all kind of ties together in that. Wow. So you're busy. Yes. <laughs> It's probably good that you're operating today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're busy. I was like, it's probably good that you're a boy mom because you got to be operational in that. Yes, yeah. true. Yes. A lot of <laughs> like, a lot of management doing? goes into boys. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Do you have to backflip right there? Yes. My, right. my boy in the backflip. I don't know. I can't. I just can't. I know. I was like, you break your head. He actually did hurt himself real bad once. He was like doing that, and he felt he hit his head on a like his sister's little doll furniture, but it's wood. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. got head open. Like, I was like, boy, and it didn't stop him for five seconds. No, my <laughs> eldest did the same thing. He was, when he was in middle school, he did a, he was in break dance and he did a backflip on the concrete, fell, cut his head. I got a phone call from the school that the ambulance came and thankfully his dad, you know, was already like on the way to the school to pick him up because it was after school. So yeah, I got a phone call that, you know, he was, on the ambulance, so I had to meet them at the hospital. He had to get stitches, like yeah, right here. Yeah, oh. it, was, it was. Them boys, we love them, but you know. And he was still like, yeah, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoop. I saw yesterday. There's this new game that makes me wanna. I almost was sick. Um, the boys in middle school and high school is the two. Of, the all three of them are jump, and one of them will swipe a leg. But what's happening is the boys is like their legs like they're hitting straight on the back of their heads. Uh -huh. I'm like, how's that fun? Like, which one of you right. is going to bust your head open? Right. So they've it's said two people have had like sustained concussions. And I can only imagine. Yeah. Like, Boys, it's why do you think of these things? They like, just do. <laughs> they just do. They don't think. It's like, that sounds fun. I'm just going to do it. And you know, whatever. If I don't die, then it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, they're invincible at that age, right? Yeah. Everything's all right. I'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> 
Oh, amazing. So, wow. So you're super busy. You're doing a whole bunch of stuff with the right lawyer. By the way, that is so clever. <laughs> I just love it. So it's Shahar Wright. I, we didn't say her last name. So the right lawyer just makes me smile because I love cleverness. Um, you do boutique business and nonprofit law, uh, legal services for small, small to medium sized businesses. And um, we didn't talk a little bit, but one of the things that uh, you had mentioned as well was um, for scaling, like scaling mm -hmm. and structure. Is mm -hmm. that something you're doing in the, on the legal side? Is there some implications there or is that more something that's on the CEO effect side? So yeah, I do it on the legal side. Um, for a while, just backstory, you know, I did um, some strategic planning and things like that. And I was doing that through the CEO effect. But I think at the end of the day, most of my clients was like, I really want the legal side. <laughs> So I just said, you know what, let me just encompass it all through my legal practice as opposed to kind of trying to separate it. So yeah, I do that through the, the, the law firm. Um, and really, it's kind of two part because when my clients are talking about scaling and growing, and usually my clients are kind of in that trajectory process, they're kind of going this way, and they're kind of leaving that mom and pop lifestyle behind and really need to have some structuring, and which means that you got to hire that when you hiring, you need to have certain things in place when you, you know, are going in a certain direction and maybe you're bringing on not necessarily more staff, but you know, more clients, more inventory, more whatever, then you need to create a structure, a legal structure around your business that allows you to be able to grow. So that's important there. And then the contracts, the things that you're doing with your vendors, your partnerships, you know, joint ventures, all of those kinds of things come into play in terms of where you're going with, you know, with what you're doing. Um, I've been having conversations with a couple of my clients about buying businesses because they're growing. And, you know, one way to grow is to purchase another business. And build without, buyer, build buyer or modify, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, I, I tell them, okay, well, if we're talking about buying a business, these are the things that we need to do that, you know, that's all part of scaling. So just the idea of saying, okay, we're going to scale. It just sounds great. And people kind of look at it where I'm just need to sell more, but it's a lot more to it than, you know, just selling more. You need to make sure that you have the structure in place in order to grow because a lot of times what happens and there's so many stories out there of, of people that grew really fast, they didn't have the structure and it actually ended up collapsing their business because they didn't couldn't handle the growth because they didn't have the structure in place to deal with it. Well, that's a terrible way to end our podcast. So let's, <laughs> let's like think of one, something Happy. positive. So with yeah. nonprofits, so is there... Um, do you have a favorite nonprofit either that you like to support or a favorite nonprofit story that was like a good thing that you helped them and how it turned out well? Well, I, I work with a lot of nonprofits, you know, on my legal side and I do a lot of community work and nonprofit work and stuff like that. So it's hard for me to say a favorite because if I say one, then they'll be like, why didn't you say you tell me? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right. So we won't, we won't put you in that position. Yeah. But I do, I do love working with nonprofits it's simply because majority of the people that I work with really do care about the causes that they're, they're working for. They really just do want to help. Um, even though you still do the same issues in a nonprofit exist in a, in a small business exist in a nonprofit. There really, there's some minor differences. I've actually been posting on LinkedIn about nonprofits this week. Um, and, you know, kind of understanding the structures and things like that. But yeah, I enjoy working with nonprofits. I enjoy working with the missions. Um, I think that the opportunity, especially for those of us who enjoy volunteering, is really, you know, important. And we really enjoy giving back. And I, I try to be involved with organizations that I care about and that I really want to see. And there are a lot. So like I said, not just for me volunteering, but you know, from my legal work and whatever, I, I deal with a lot of nonprofits, um, volunteering and working with them. And I, I enjoy all of it. That's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. I have, I have a couple of local ones that I work with as well. And, um, I, it's, it's really interesting. They're so passionate about the cause 
but yes. I find they struggle a little, like a lot with back office because yes. <laughs> they just don't come from that space, right? They come yeah. from this heart space, right. um, not from the ops side. So I can see that being a, an area where you can provide a great impact. Well, so is there anything you'd like to like leave our customers or leave our listeners with knowing uh, how to contact you or anything that's going on for you right now? We'd love to, we'd love to hear that. Sure. So you can contact me at therightlawyer.com. That's my web, the website. I can't speak. Um, therightlawyer.com and that's W-R-I-G-H-T. Um, you can also go to Facebook and find me there. I'm at the right lawyer. That's my, uh, that's the page for the law firm. And then on LinkedIn, I post a lot. I think I just mentioned a lot on LinkedIn. I'm really focusing on doing a lot more content on LinkedIn. And that's under my name, Shahara Wright, um, W-R-I-G-H-T again. Um, you can find me there. And then I have like a little side project um, that I'm doing under the CEO effect, but is called Single Mom CEO. And I have a Facebook page called Single Mom CEO Six. Uh, yeah, single mom CEO success, and then also there's single mom CEO.net. But anyway, the whole point is, is that I'm a single mom and a business owner, and so I really wanted to kind of celebrate and showcase other single moms who are business owners who are working hard, providing for their families, and you know, running a business full time as well. There's just challenges to that, and really, I interviewed seven um, other women who are doing this and that's part of the series there. We're gonna be launching um, an accessory line soon. And you know, so if you're a single mom and a full-time business owner, you wanna come and check us out, come there and join us. Um, it's a page, not a group. So you can you know, come and learn and see a, a, other women who are doing the same thing that you are and connect. So that's, that's, that's what we awesome. We'll make sure we put all of that in the show notes because it's super exciting and I love uh, every master was once a mess, right? And we, yes. through our challenges that we find out our, our best way to serve others. So thank you for sharing that. I didn't, I didn't get to sneak in in that when I was like researching. Um, so thank you I so much. I got too much going on. I need to slow it down a little bit, but yeah. I, I, sh I should, um, and before we wrap up, I have to remember to contact you. I know a, a nice, uh, there's an organization that funds single moms to help start their businesses. Oh, and that might yes. be a, a good resource connection. So I'll Absolutely. be sure to contact you off offline because I don't want to put their business out there. But um, <laughs> all right. So thank you so much, Shahar. It was so nice. At, I'm, I know you're busy. So you know, we're <laughs> so blessed that you took the time to meet with us today. And I can't wait to have your podcast go live. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm very excited. Um, and I, I'm grateful that you allowed me to be here. Oh, thanks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.